The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defence upon thy right hand. So that the sun should not burn me by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth for evermore. I don't know whether you've ever stopped to think that when you look down, what do you see? You see the earth, don't you? And you, you might see worms. And then you look straight in front of you. And you see buildings. And if you look over the top, or if you look up, you can see the sky. And if you look long enough to the sky, and you think about those words that I just said, that song, I'm sure that behind those clouds, there is God. Or shall we put it this way, the Holy Spirit guiding, guarding and keeping us in all our troubles and difficulties that we, that we go through in life. expect uh, these people to grow old gracefully when they don't know anything about uh, the existence of God or they don't know anything about our Lord or anything uh, about the Bible. Peace be to this house and all that dwell therein. in that canteen and I was so close. Where have you landed yourself? You're in a mental house. <laughs> Every day we're nearing our goal, aren't we? And every day we're ready, we're prepared, whether it comes in night or morning, isn't it? We never know when we're going. I've been asked to, to leave this place and I came in the first place, you know, first time I've ever been anywhere like this, but I came here and uh, I want to stop here. Even though they tell me they're going to pull it down, I said, well, if they pull it down, I want to be here when they pull it down. I've got little ways of going about, little, little friends, I've got a bold blind lady, a blind gentleman I mix up with, I pass my time in that way. As, as things are, my, I, I can't, I don't want anything else, I've been asked to go to up different places, I've refused. Anything you say to the people here is uh, tolerance seemed to cease to be a virtue, but they're better now and I'm used to it and they're not as bad as they were. They move some out of the wards. And the Japanese say, Uma ne ni nembutsu, holy prayers and horses. It's no use talking to them. So I ignore it. 
I drink a lot of water and the woman used to call me nothing dirty old guy, but worm cake. And I went and I was sick each time that she came to the table, but I got over it. I never go to doctors or take medicine. I think some people, uh, they are afraid to go out uh, into the outside world and make decisions or do anything for themselves, but they are content uh, to stay where it's safe and have people say, well, do this or do that. I know there's something and what that is, uh, I couldn't say. You know, I, I think... Sometimes it is right, or it's all right. After all, said some, the trees are supposed to die out the end. They all come to life next summer. <laughs> Over the years, Mr. Blackshaw opened up the woodshed every morning after breakfast. Uh, he sawed up timber and chopped wood and arranged it in cartons, the ration for each ward which the domestic help collected to light the fires. Uh, he also uh, uh, collected newspapers and bundled, bailed them, and uh, has been here for 20 years. And uh, in that time, he hasn't attempted to go to the front gate I used to pass along the embankment, and I found a lot of them dying and dead. And when I picked one up, I saw that it was absolutely starvation they died of. Just a mass of feathers and bone. Nothing, no substance at all. And the old Westminster street cleaners used to say, a few crumbs would have saved them. Well, it seemed so sad in a city so big, with there's so much waste, I thought, well, surely. People could find a few crumbs to keep the poor creatures going. Well, uh, I sort out the stuff, you see, the crumbs, and break them up fine so that the pigeons, you see, pigeons don't have grinders, teeth like some animals. The food should be about the size of a pea so that they can pick it up, pick it up and swallow it. So I make up bread very small, and I use the newspapers to do it on. This is my feeble attempt and the understatement of the century to describe the place in which I find I have the misfortune to find myself in. With the minds of a lot of hens clucking or snorting pigs into their swell tucking, apposite simile away chucking, to inanimate things apply fucking. With English, they are so very careless hear better grammar from monster Loch Ness. They don't want no more of that bloody mess, which means they wanted more and thought you'd guess. Walking along, drop a turd on the floor. For what other purpose is a 4-4? Going to the shit house is such a bore, besides the effort to open the door. For farts, they would win an Oscar for stink. Say red coats referring to hunting pink, sank as low as they could possibly sink. Anthropologists would say, missing link. When introduced, say, I'm pleased to meet you, with crafty sizing up, him can I do? Do him for a pound? Or perhaps for two? Do his own mother's, so no matter who. The floor is quite littered with dropped H's to mingle with the shit and cockroaches. I heard, how can a man be happy here? I haven't got the price of half a beer. <coughs> I am not afraid to admit it. I'm stopping at an old man's home. I'm alone. 
It's all right, but I'm, that man can interfere. He's in regular work. He's only 50 to 20 pounds a week. Oh, that's what we thought of. That's what we thought of. The country, I'm, I'm an Englishman. And I'm Sometimes I wonder why I fought in World War No. 1. That's right. For freedom and liberty, and fraternity, the living in our country, starving to death. The Lord of all grace and blessing, behold, visit and relieve this thy servant. Give her confidence in me, if it be thy will. Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. To God's gracious care and protection we commit you. May the light of his countenance shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Oh, please, oh, please. Bye bye, dear. Oh, Goodbye. Oh, I'll come God, and have another God. look at you later oh, on. Oh, thank God. There is a green old far, far away, but out the city wall, where my dear Lord was crucified and found us labored all. Mary had a little lamb, her feet as white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. She went to school one day. And he went to school one day and... Death alone will make a really intimate meeting between spirit and spirit possible. Then we shall know each other, not merely by that which one body is able to convey and another grasp, but by the penetrating power of direct spirit knowledge. People will meet each other in a very true sense for the first time. Remove all bedding and place a rubber sheet under the deceased. Remove all clothing from the body. Using a little disinfectant in the water, wash thoroughly round the buttocks. Place a pad of absorbent cotton between the legs. Cut a square of calico and apply as a napkin and pin firmly in position. The aim should be to attain a natural and restful position. There is no need for the nose to be meticulously centered and pointing to the ceiling. The setting of the mouth is more than simply propping up the chin. The dentures must be properly seated and the lips smoothed into a natural position. The eyes need expert attention too. A wafer of cotton wool spread gently will serve to support the eyelids when the substance of the eyeball shrinks, as it inevitably does after death. The lids should be set as in natural sleep. The positioning of the arms and hands is also worthy of careful attention, for the hands can be most expressive. The fingers should be bent into a natural pose. This may need a little pressure on the wrist and knuckles, but a little patience will bring the right result and make a wonderful difference. Finally, one should stand back one or two paces from the subject and judge if the result is restful and natural. I was weary before At the head where the blue shadows fall I shall come to downhearted and yet But the toil of the day Will be all churned away With my little grey home in the west there are hands that will welcome me in. There are lips that I'm burning to kiss. There are two eyes that shine just because they are mine. And 
a thousand things other men miss. It's a corner of heaven itself, though it's only a tumble down there.